Good afternoon, Internet. It's Saturday afternoon. It is nearly one o'clock. It is the 17th of February. And this is a voiceover. It's a voiceover due to the fact that me, I forgot to switch the mics on. I'd love to say it was the GoPro. It's not. It's down to me. Wireless mics are great, but if you don't switch them on, you got no sound. So it's a voiceover. Right. So the bearings have arrived. There's the bearings. I'm holding the bearings up. I got these from Wiimoto in France. Thank you very much. Excellent service. Right, over to the wheel. Now, everything's been cleaned down prior to me putting this back together. These bearings, taking them out, they wasn't the easiest thing to come out. But there again, they have been in for 34 years. So I had to get a heat. Um, I got a little gas blow torch, heated them up. Um, because the last thing you want to do is put a lot of stress on the aluminium wheels. I mean, like I said, 34 years old. Does aluminium suffer age fatigue? I'm not too sure. There's the trusty gas. So I decided when I took them out, I the, the most easiest way was to heat them up. They came out very easy. As in when I'm going to put these back in, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a little bit of heat, not a lot. You know, we're not cooking Sunday lunch. You know, you don't want to boil the grease. It's just a case, get them warm. The aluminium, aluminium, thank you, will expand and hopefully the bearings will slide in very easily. But of course, I already know the outcome of this video and you don't. So there I am tapping the wheel. Isn't it marvellous? When you do a voiceover, you, you tend to be ahead of yourself. It's OK when you're actually doing the video and you're talking away. Um, and voiceover, I don't like voiceovers. I'm not very good at voiceovers. I like talking as and when I'm doing the job. Now, I've wandered off somewhere. <laughs> uh, oh, here I am, and I'm back. Right, okay, I, I'll get the gloves on, get the gloves on. And the reason that I decided to put the gloves on, I hate wearing these gloves, but obviously, you know, we're gonna, it's gonna involve grease. Obviously, the, uh, the new bearings will be smeared in grease prior to fitting them. So, rather than get my dainty little fingers and hands all dirty, let's get on the latex gloves. There you go. So, gloves on. What am I doing now? There we go. Okay. We're getting the bearings out. Now, in this kit, we have a left bearing, a right bearing. Uh, we have one dust cover or seal, oil seal. We also get Wiimoto sending me well, not just me, send anybody with every order a new key ring. Uh, very nice. Thank you, gentlemen. And, okay, I'm just, exp <laughs> I'm just, exp oh, voiceovers, dearly me. I, I don't know how some, some people, I, it's quite strange really because you do actually look on some of the videos that's on YouTube and um, there's absolutely no voice at all. You know, there's just a complete video. And nothing's being explained. Okay, so basically what I'm saying here that it is all nice and cleaned out prior to me fitting this. So I'm, I'm going to get the bearing out. Here we go. Now these bearings aren't handy. Both both sides are exactly the same. There's no leading edge, so it doesn't matter which way up you put these. Um, some bearings on some particular bikes and cars, um, it it it's marked on the actual face, this side out or this side in or whatever, these aren't. So it doesn't matter. You can put them in whichever way you wish. Okay, so that's me there showing you look, that it, it, it doesn't say, you just basically, hot look, you choose. Okay, there you go. Now, what, what I'm going to do in a minute is I smear, I'm going to smear, not, you never put grease on the, the wheel bit where the bearing goes. Because if you do, as you drift the bearing in, you're going to knock the grease down and you, you, like, you, you sort of form a hydraulic bed so that what actually happens is the bearing ends up sitting on a film of grease, uh, you don't want that. So basically, same as which I'm showing you now, when you just smear a little bit of grease on, but you smear it 
sort of halfway of the thickness to the top not the bottom so is that the, the grease is dragged up and not down so there's no fear or danger of you sort of squashing the grease down okay now here we go get get the old gas out now again you know this this is just to warm up the gas uh, this, as you can see I, Aladdin's lamp here mate look at that eh? it's <laughs> it's, ba it's basically because um, it's these gas as I'm sure anyone that's got one when you turn them on the side if the gas isn't very warm inside because it's butane not propane um, it doesn't it doesn't quite do what it's supposed to do so but as it warms up then it then it tends to work there you go it's getting It just you know it, it just, when you actually do things like this and you sort of do voiceovers it it sort of goes to show that you know at least my videos are live I, and i don't edit too much. i have edited bits of this out i must admit because obviously there was bits where i was talking about you know different things and it when you're doing a voiceover it just wouldn't have made sense plus the fact i can't remember what i was probably talking about anyway Right, so here we go. Like I said, again, you're not getting this anywhere near red hot. You are literally warming up the aluminium just to expand it, just that little bit, which allows that bearing, you know. You don't have to force it in with a lump hammer, you know. You just tap it round. You'll see that I use a very small hammer, you know, because you, 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 do, you don't want to cause any stress. So you just want to make it, easier for that bearing to slide in that's all it is to it i'm not too sure i think i am i putting the grease on there maybe i didn't put the grease on before i think i was showing you where to put the grease on before now i've actually put the grease on and there we go now you can tell that that wheel's not hot because you know i'd be if it was see look i'll be burning my fingers it's warm there's a difference so what I'm going to do is I I've got the old bearing look, okay. So obviously the old bearing is exactly the same size, and is a useful tool to use as a drift. So now that's the hammer. Look, it's it's only a small hammer, and you could see by the way that's no big swings. That's a gentle tap all the way around. Now the idea is, and I'm sure everybody knows, is you know do it evenly, knock it down. You know take your time don't try and knock one side down further than the other try and compensate it because all you're going to do then is you're distorting the actual bearing right so that's the last thing that you want to do so you know nice and easy tap it round and it will go down slowly but surely i've seen some people you know they they get a block of wood on top or a piece of steel and they're whacking away to their heart's content. There's absolutely no need for any of that. You know, if you if you warm them up and you put a little bit of grease rain and you you just take your time, a little bit at a time, and it goes in a treat. And you've caused no damage to the wheel or to the new bearing. I mean, the last thing that you want to do is be whacking away a brand new bearing because in six months time it's going to give up on you so there we go look i think we're virtually virtually there I, one thing that i was saying towards the end of when i put this in and the other one in is there was a little bit of glitch there on the uh on the video that i'm sure you saw i don't know what that was anyway um is that when it when when it's actually down when it's home the sound changes it becomes a a sort of uh, a metallic louder metallic sound yeah instead of a ding it becomes a dong if you know what i mean <laughs> because you're it, it, it's bedded home so you you get that different sound and that's how you can tell or you do what i do and you look just to make sure i think there was a little bit more to go if i remember rightly yep there you go 
So again, now I think this time, have I changed? I think I've changed to a socket now. Finishing off with the socket. Because with the socket, that's when you detect this different sound. Yeah? Which I would have been saying on the video. And you you would have heard the sound because there was me saying, oh, listen, you can hear the difference in sound. But because some complete and utter idiot forgot to turn on the microphones, you can't hear anything apart from me waffling away. Which, yeah, that's me doing the talking, so it's a good job, really. But... Uh, it's unbelievable, you know, for the sake of, I, I don't think, I, no, to be, to be fair, I think I, I've done this once before, totally just forgot to switch on the microphone, it's so annoying, you know, uh, and you don't find out until I sort of finish the video and I walk back in to take everything off and you go to switch the mics off and then I'm on, <laughs> and it's the most demoralising, you're like, oh my God, anyway. That's me there telling you about the different noise. That that this is the bit now. I'm saying, can you hear this noise? <laughs> I remember this bit. Okay, there you go. So that's that one home, yeah. Okay, and I'm saying that's that's nice. That's nice. That's what a bedding should feel like. Right. So switch it round, and the same thing again. Where? What am I doing there? Yeah. Now that's your spacer bar that goes in, right? That's the spacer that goes in and connects the two bearings together. And of course, that, I mean, I'm sure everybody knows, you've got to have that in. If you didn't have that space bar in, when you put your axle through and you did up your axle nut, then all the pressure would be on the inner race of the bearings. And basically the bearings, both of them would just literally be, be, be crushed and and you know would just collapse so that's in a space bar which is the same size as the inner race on the bearings that's what protects it. the bearings pull up against that and that's it everything works fine there we go again bit of heat again a bit of heat nothing you know we're not we're not cooking yet we're just getting that nice nicely warmed up just to allow that bearing to just slide in that little bit earlier now this one this one is setting deeper so this this one is 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 drifted in a, twice twice as far in as the opposite side so you know uh it's very important with this one to get it going down nice and easy the last thing that you want to do is is to get this crooked because once you do that and you wedge that bearing in you know even though you might be able to knock it back straight from the other side it's the damage that you've caused to a brand new bearing so again a small hammer you know uh i've just greased up the bearing again you know just a smear of grease on the upper side so it doesn't take it down with it it pushes it up and again a small hammer uh start off using the old bearing so you know it's a nice fit all the way around now some people when they do this when they use the old bearing they put a piece of wood across the top which is fine you know again we've all got our own ways of doing this i don't do it i like to see how the new bearing is going in. Is it going in straight? You know, and and if you've got a big piece of wood across the top, your 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 sight of the new bearing is limited. And so I'd I'd rather do it a little bit of a time, a little bit of a tap, and make sure that that bearing is going down nice and square or round, as the case may be, because the bear it's not a square bearing, is it? But you know what I mean. If doing voiceovers, you have to try and throw these little bits and pieces in house. Trust me, you run out of things to say. And even somebody like me, who can talk for England, or France as the case may be, because that's the country I live in, runs out of things to say. Especially when I'm there, look, tapping away. I mean, I'm saying plenty on the video, uh, but I've, for the life of me, I can't remember what I'm saying. But yeah, so 
it's just a case of taking your time, you know, taking it easy with that Anna. You know, it's uh, there you go. Little bit at a time. And you know, the the if you it's if you're gonna do a job, and I always love it when you do a job. And this this is the annoying thing with this video. This was a, a a nice video to do. It came together. There was no hiccups. Everything went to plan. And that's the one where I don't record. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. So you can see I've changed to the socket now because as I said, don't forget, this is deeper. So this socket is, is just two mil smaller in circumference to the outer rays of the bearing but that's fine because it's by going round and round you can still keep it in contact to where you want to be you're never hitting the actual plastic in a race so yeah now again what i would be saying is as we're tapping it down what we're sort of listening for is that different tone and that's when you know you're home that's when you know you're sealed right down so we're nearly there anyway now look at that look at the look at the look of concentration on that man's face eh? you can obviously tell as well that uh, although our weather here is wet to say the least again it's raining today it always does thinnest air um it's very mild hence the fact as you can see you know short sleeves in the garage this time of the year is not normally heard of but this year has been so mild oh i do believe we had another little glitch there i don't know what that's all about i don't know if it's my computer or maybe if it's just i don't know where i don't know you will be able to tell when it goes on YouTube and you see it live if there's a glitch or not. Never mind. Can't do much about that if there is. So, yeah, um, it, it's, you know, the weather here has been so mild. But, of course, Finisterre is known for its rain. You know, we are the bit that sticks out. I remember when I was a kid uh, of a Sunday evening back in the UK, my dad, for some unknown reason, used to listen to the shipping forecast. He had nothing to do with ships, mind you, but for some other reason, he listened to the shipping forecast. And I always used to remember Finisterre was windy and wet. And as a kid, I always used, used to think, oh, that must be a terrible place. And where do I end up living? Finisterre. Right, okay, so that's the bearing home now, yeah? So that's that one drifted down, I do believe. Um, I got carried away talking about Finisterre there. I wasn't paying attention, but still, I'm... I'm I'm off to somewhere, maybe to get the cush rubbers. Oh no, maybe to get the dust cover because on this, there is this, this is the side where we have our dust cover. There you go. Now again, when you fit this dust cover, I've seen people put pieces of wood across and hammer them down and everything. It's a piece of plastic with a spring inside. You don't need to do that, you know. If you grease it round, if you this time you put a little bit of grease on the actual inner wheel look itself to where the cover's going to press down, and then you put a tiny bit of I mean you know we're talking about a bit of grease, not loads of it, on the actual seal itself. Now you can press this on with your fingers. There's absolutely no need to hammer this on. Why people do it, I I just don't know. Right. If you get this right and even, get your thumbs, push it down, it'll just pop into place. It's as simple as that. Brute force is not required. There you go, look. Get it down nicely, that's it. Then clean off the excess grease. I'm sure that's what I'm saying. I think the hands there were saying no need for hammers. There you go, clean off the excess grease. Okay. So that's the bearings fitted. Two bearings and a dust cover. That didn't take very long at all, did it? And it, it, you know, it was a nice, easy job. You know, the main thing to get these jobs done is to get everything clean, first of all. You know, so there's no obstacles in the way, no burrs, no horrible bits and pieces that the, the new bearings can catch. Right, 
So we're down to the cush rubbers now. That's that. This is the last thing to put in before we we put in the sprocket carrier to finish the wheel assembly off. So I'm sure that's what I'm getting. Am I? <laughs> I am indeed. There we go. There is our box with the new cush rubbers. Now these, although they will fit two ways, either way round, but it, they're pretty self-explanatory. There's a groove and an angle bit, which I'm showing you there, that fits perfectly. You know, I, I think I do actually turn it round, look, do I? And, and I, I'm pointing to where it goes now. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, that's it. That it, it, you, you can't really go wrong, yeah? Just make sure they're pushed down nice. All the way around. I mean, a good set of cush rubbers makes all the difference. It really does. Uh, the difference between these that I'm pulling in and the old ones. Um, again, you know, I'm presuming that the old ones are the original ones. So 34 years old. Um, they're entitled to go hard. All rubber goes hard. You know, I mean, it does over age. Okay, so here we go. Again. There's only one way that this can fit in. It fits in between the cush rubbers. Everything is shaped. You cannot go wrong, you know? It's impossible. So what you've got to do is push it down firmly as far as you can. Now, remember, this is going to be a tight fit because it's these are new rubbers. This is what it's all about. It's there to take up the judder when the chain takes up the drive. So, you know, this isn't just going to drop in and drop down because if it did, it, they wouldn't be doing the job. So get them, get it level as much as you can with your hand, yeah? And then using a rubber mallet and only a rubber mallet, which I am now off in search to get. Tap it round with your trusty rubber mallet. Now, again, tap it, you know, you're not... What I'm actually doing there is if you, if you look, I'm hitting the bolt heads that hold on the sprocket to the sprocket carrier, yeah. So I'm not putting any pressure on the actual sprocket itself, yeah. Now I'm going more to the outside just to finish it off. Now, this, this will always have a slight gap, yeah. Probably four or five mil gap, but that's that's exactly how it fits. That's normal. That's what it's supposed to do. So when you're happy, and bear in mind what you've got to remember is if for some unknown reason you haven't got it in tight enough, it ain't going to fit in the gap between your arm. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Okay, so. We offer up our wheel. Now, I, I I did actually edit a bit out there because I was talking and tidied up and all that. So the two spacers that I took out when the wheel came out, obviously the two spacers are put back in. One on the left hand side, one on the right hand side. Yeah. Well, there's a nice view of the back of my head. What I'm basically doing there is, it, it, you know, it, it's always the same. When you're actually working, you're, you're thinking of what you're doing, not thinking of where the camera angle is. And, you know, I apologise for that because I do notice that on, on a few of my videos. But, you know, you, my mind has got to be on what I'm actually doing on the bike. So, yeah. Uh, it would be nice if I, one or two of the people, um, there's a there's a guy that I've watched for some years now called Delroy's Garage. Is it Delroy? I'm, no, I'm sure it is. Uh, and he has his wife filming. And of course, he gets some brilliant shots because, you know, she's there and she's following around it. And it's absolutely brilliant. But when you're doing it on your own and you've got the camera on a tripod, you sort of tend to forget anyway. 
Right, so I think that's the uh, that's the wheel lined up. Uh, and I do believe that now am I putting a brake? The uh, I'm not too sure. No, I'm doing, yes, I am. I'm put. I'm putting the the casting arm of the back the back brake. Now, if that was a funny noise, I do apologise because messages coming through on my laptop as I'm doing my little voiceover. And of course, we wouldn't normally have that, would we? But still, never mind. So, what I've done now, I think. Uh, yeah, is the axle I've applied grease, uh, not a lot. I mean, that axle doesn't turn, it doesn't spin, you know, the bearings spin on it. But it's important that, that the axle is greased up, if anything, just to protect it from the weather, yeah. Now, of course, it's always difficult on your own to get the wheel and get it all lined up. Again, what you don't want to be doing if there's any, because don't forget, it's got to go through uh, one, two, three, di four different moving part bits, yeah? Plus, you've got the spacer in the middle of the wheel anyway that it's going on. And the last thing to do is if you get any resistance, don't go and get a hammer and start knocking seven bells out of it because all you're going to do is damage the threads. And if you damage the threads, you'll be buying a new axle. It's just not worth it. Patience, that's the only thing. I mean, what I do is, and I'm, I think I'll do it in a minute, I, I get the, the rubber mallet again, because a rubber mallet takes the shock. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt anything. It just puts a little bit of pressure on it, not loads. And if it does come against any resistance, it's the rubber mallet that takes the shock. There, there you go, look. I've just got it there, just tap it in, and it taps through, look, look. See how easy that's tapping through? I'm not belting it hard, I'm just tapping it with a mat. There's a big difference, yeah? Now, the final bit is obviously where it's got to come through the adjuster notch and where the back brakes, where where the caliper arm attaches. So you've got to get all that lined up. Again, if you've got someone with you, they can line that side up while you're knocking it through from this side but when you're on your own you've you've just got to sort of keep on going keep moving the wheel slightly and tapping slightly until it goes through and it will you know it's again it's just patience luckily i'm a very patient person with some things Any, anything to do with the mechanics whether it be on a bike or a car i i've got the patience of a saint my patience runs extremely short with people. <laughs> uh, trust me, still never mind. So, there we go, just the final bit look, getting it through. I do believe that's on. Yep. And so, now it's a case of just putting the, the locating washer and the axle nut on, so we, we secure it up. Now, the bit I'm going to explain as well, obviously, what needs to be done is the chain needs to be tensioned back up. Now, Honda state that the chain adjustment needs to be done with the bike on the side stand or a paddock stand, but not the centre stand. Because obviously, when it's on the centre stand, your swinging arm is completely down. Yeah, so there's there's no actual tension being put on the chain. So that's why they say that the chain needs to be adjusted while it's on the side stand or the paddock stand. Now I do it on the paddock stand, but what I'm going to do here is I took a measurement prior to taking the wheel off and I'm going to set it back up to that. So it's virtually there. But then when all the bike is built back up and I take it off the lift, that's when I will adjust the chain properly. 
Right, now I think at this stage as well, I'm not too sure what I'm doing. I could be, I think I'm cleaning down the, the or spraying down with brake cleaner some of the parts prior to putting on the, uh, the, back, the back brakes and the pads. I'm not too sure where I've disappeared to now. Could have edited this bit out, but I didn't. Right, okay. So this is me. Look, I'm just I'm just checking the chain now, just to get. This is what I said. I, I measured it before I took the back wheel off. So if I get it more or less back in the same, I know I'm not that far out of adjustment. And then I'll 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 do the final adjustment. And also, when I when I um have done the chain adjustment that's when i'll do the final talking up of the axle nut but there's no point doing it now because it's all you know that's 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 got to be taken back off again uh and that's what i, I think i'm doing i'm just maybe doing the adjusters now yeah i'm getting it more or less in the right place this is the trouble voiceovers i'm not too sure myself exactly what i'm doing uh, and it makes it it makes it worse when you're doing a voiceover video because i'm only seeing a little tiny picture so that makes it even worse you know so never mind okay now i do believe yeah that i'm gonna do it yeah am i that's a good idea, Carl. Move it round so I can see what I'm doing. So I'm presuming now that I'm going to do the axle nut up. Okay. I think a lot of these glitches that that, that that again I just saw another glitch come through. And I okay, so I had to stop there for a minute, so I hope that's not uh, causing any problems. Right, so basically now it's just putting the back brakes together. Now I, I cleaned the pads down prior to to put in this in now what what i'm showing you here this is a little clip right when you take these pads out this clip falls off it literally sits on the casting there right and what it's for is when the pads are fitted in the back of the pads locate on that clip to save you know obviously to save just sitting on the casting but it falls right and it can be a right pain it really can so what I do when I actually fit it on, I put a, just a little tiny blob of grease behind it and that keeps it into place. Right, so the caliper, again, right? It, it's nice and clean anyway, but I'm gonna spray it all down. Look, we brake cleaner, yeah? I, I'm a big believer, if you're gonna take things apart, while you've got them apart, take the opportunity and put everything back together nice and clean. It makes such a difference. I mean, it really does. I, I you know, I, I say this time and time again, and all my bikes are the same. If you keep them nice and clean, I mean, you know, I get it because I've said this before. If you use your your bike for off roading, then it's a different kettle of fish altogether. I don't. Mine, all my bikes are purely road bikes. So for me. You know, I, I take pride in, in what I do. I take pride in fixing them. I take pride in looking after them. I think it's important. All right, what I'm showing you there is is where the plunger goes in and this slides in and out. That, prior to me putting that on, that was all cleaned out. It was, it was, re, it was re-greased. Copper slip, that's what I use. That's the only thing I use on my bikes when it comes to parts like this. And I know because I've had it said to me in the comments, you know, oh, in fact, one bloke said, oh, you shouldn't use copper slip. Well, 
as I said back in the comments, I've been using copper slip now for over 50 odd years. It's never let me down. And yes, before everybody tells me, things moved on in time and I get that. It's like the oils, everything has moved on. But I like copper slip. It does the job. It, it, so I'm going to use copper slip. And that's the important fact. When it's your vehicle, you use what you want. We've all got our own different beliefs, but it doesn't mean to say that you shouldn't use this particular one. Anyway, on with the job in hand. So that's all that caliper cleaned down nice and clear. I'm not too sure where I've toddled off to now, but I'm sure we'll find out when I come back. Like I said, I'm seeing a very little picture here. Which, uh, oh, copper slip. What, what are we doing here? I'm putting copper slip on summit. <laughs> Not too sure what. Never mind. Eh? Oh, yeah, that's okay. On the bit that slides into the rubber there, exactly, is where, where I was putting the copper slip. There you go. Okay, so that's that. Now, I do believe that I get this bracket now. Or had I already put the bracket on? Not too sure. Voiceovers are us. <laughs> well, I'm explaining something there. Look, the hands as usual are going all over the place. Okay, so this this here is the the pad pin. Again, you know, um, Honda do a great job. With this or, or that could be the pad pin i'm not sure no yeah that's the pad pin that's the bit that runs between your two pads that you know and it's it's a hex key look it's great it literally just screws in it is a brilliant bit of fantastic you just you don't have to knock it out there's no split pins it literally screws in and then on the end of that they put this piece here look which is a tiny little little cover little metal cap which then seals it all off from the you know from the dirt and the grime and the water and god knows what else if you live in uk all the salt that they put on the roads that attack our bikes luckily in france well most of europe we don't have to suffer that but it does it makes working on these these bikes are an absolute dream to work on you know they like I said, I believe, and this is just my opinion, but I really truly believe that in the 80s, 90s, Honda were at their best, you know, and and working on their bikes, it's absolutely so easy. You know, they almost made them in those day and age that you could do everything yourself. <laughs> Nowadays, dearly me, you they're not motorcycle mechanics they're technicians because everything is like it's just computerized isn't it right where am i right i do believe that right okay so this look this is this clip here that i'm putting on i put some grease on and now it doesn't fall off it stays there yeah okay so now now you can put your pads in and they fit up and and lock up against this which in a bit I do actually get the camera above and show you because it is important to make sure that the end of your two pads are located properly into that. Now you'll have to excuse my big bald head, but there again, doing it on your own is not the easiest thing to do. Well, camera wise, I mean. Okay, so that's getting that through, and you that. Your bar just slides in there, look, yeah. Your pad clip just goes in, and then you get you get your Allen key in a minute. Literally do it up. So simple, absolutely so simple. You know, compared to, for instance, you know the Himalayan. You know, you have to knock it out because it's it's on that split collar. You know, you have to knock it out and take the split pin out. This is so simple excellent absolutely beautiful to work on now i put a bit of copper slip there look see now a lot of people say oh well, you don't want to put it there it attracts the dirt well it doesn't attract the dirt that's if you keep your bike clean does it so you know again it stops 
any corrosion and it allows those pads to move freely so just nip that up now look again not tight you know just nicely and then get to the end and then just a little look just slight bit of pressure on yeah because you've got the other cap that's going on as well that's that's not going to go anywhere it's just not going to go anywhere there's your cap look yeah again a little bit of copper slip just on the threads so the next time you take all this apart you know it, it comes apart with these these pads on this bike this is worth a mention these are ceramic back and front i put a set of ceramic pads on and um i've got to be honest really nice braking system yeah i mean don't forget the the front it's only a single disc same as the himalayan really um but of course this is a, a much more powerful bike than the himalayan but yeah um the ceramic pads uh were great right now this is where you've got to make sure look that the the back end of these pads are seated in that clip so if you just if you lift the caliper up which you can do yet because you haven't got your caliper bolt bolted through lift that up make sure that they're there now i do believe i get the camera now there you go and you should be able to see that the both ends of the pads go up against that clip and that's what it's all for but it's most important because you know that that is all correctly put back in there you go so that's that so the next job now is to bolt the caliper on again this needs to be torqued down right there is a torque set into this and when i adjust the chain when the bike is is off the lift then i'll do that but i'm not going to get the torque wrench out just for one bolt and then have to get it out again so we'll just pinch it up for now Then he finds which uh, which socket fits it. <laughs> there you go. And that's that done. So that's it really. That's all put back together. I've got an idea I'll give it all a final spray over. Maybe not. Oh no, okay. You've got these two bolts here, which these, again, copper slip look. I love copper slip. These are your, your fixing, your, your, your little brackets that keep your brake pipe nicely attached and stop it flapping around again you know look at that look nicely fixed you know so much thought went into the manufacture of these bikes you can really see why they're they're sort of you know now becoming a sought after bike you know especially with the world going to more sort of adventure touring or or, or trail riding these bikes they're brilliant for that they really are you know Again, with these, there's no need. You just nip these up. You, there, there probably is a torque setting to these, but I've been doing these sort of bolts up for so long, you sort of get used to it. And, and you know, again, you know, they're only 8mm bolts, so you don't need huge amounts of pressure, just enough just to nip it up. Okay, and that's it. Look, there you go. All sorted. Job done. Well happy with that job. Okay, that's me again saying to that. 